Hello, everyone. This is Megan. And this is Alana. And welcome to Tea Time Crimes. to the boring old theme music. Just Aww, kidding. Oh, no more spooky time. We still like it. How are you doing today, Alana? Doing all right. How about yourself? Uh, is Hey, question. Question. Peanut, the squirrel that you rescued, yeah. is he still yeah. with you? He is. Oh, it's been two weeks, hasn't it? And there's the cat that you also rescued. Yeah, there's the... In the background. The bridge cat, which, here's, get this. Um, he'll settle down. <laughs> He's really talkative right now. We have a guest podcaster with us today. It's Bridge Kitty. So Chris named him <laughs> Tesoro. <laughs> Wait, what the heck are you trying to say? T- tesoro. <laughs> Why are you saying it like that? Say it because normal. it's Italian. It means treasure in Italian. And his, so just say his it. ancestry is mostly Italian, but he says it like that, and you know, and I, he, I hate it. So I call him Tezzy. That's what we've been calling yeah, him. Yeah, because you, you can't, you can't in no. the, do the Italian accent. No. No. I mean, you can do it again. It's amazing. No. <laughs> Your name is Tezzy, not Tesoro. Why? Why do you have to say it like that every time? Tesoro. They, they, <laughs> they do their, you know. I'm doing hand movements for our viewers yeah. who can't see. Yeah, all the viewers. Oh, just... Also called listeners. <laughs> viewer of one, and it's me every time. We just need to get a YouTube channel. We do have a YouTube channel, but not all of the videos are uploaded. But check us out on YouTube. We're getting there. Tea Time yeah. Crimes. Nice plug. Yeah. All right, I've got a good one to get us back in the saddle today, so let's hop into that tea review. What do you got? Oh, so this is... From one of our listeners who hates when I sip tea on the mic, but she gave me a tea, so joke's on her. So she's enabling you. <laughs> yes, exactly. It's called Licorice Spice. Oh, yuck. Nope. Do you like licorice? <laughs> I love licorice because... Stop it. Why? She, okay, so she's a kiwi, and you know, my <sighs> mom's a kiwi, and so what I found out is any in America, you're if you like black licorice, you're either old or you're a foreigner or have like a foreigner influence because nobody likes black licorice. <laughs> nobody. No, it's very rare. So, but we both do. And I usually like old things. <laughs> so yes. gross. So um, there's not a lot of description here. Yeah, it's it probably just says disgusting. Drink at your own <laughs> you know, risk. I don't know if they, uh, that would pass marketing, but um, <laughs> the ingredients are licorice root, cinnamon, orange peel, Star, is it anise or an any anise? I'm pretty sure it's any anise. <laughs> That's definitely it. That's definitely it. No, you got to nailed extract. it. Sarsaparilla. I don't know if it's Perfect. said like that either. I'm sure it is. Orange so oil, right. natural cinnamon flavor, clove bud oil, cardamom. So basically, they said, "Hey, we're gonna make a licorice tea, and then we're gonna do our best <laughs> to get rid of the licorice flavor so that people don't hate it." Hope you enjoy. It's caffeine free, but what's interesting is there's a little asterisk after licorice root that says this ingredient is not intended for use during pregnancy and while nursing or if you have heart disease or high blood pressure. I had no idea about licorice root like that. Yeah, it was used a long time ago for medicinal purposes to... Oh, do you think uh, your twin used it back in the day? Who's my twin? I'm a sheep? Claire from Outlander. Oh, yeah. Fr- <laughs> fraternal twin, and I got the short end of that stick. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, didn't she use some kind of mugwort or something? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's something she said with an M. I don't know. All right. Anyway, get to it. Drink that disgusting liquid. Okay, this is going to sound a little weird. So it smells like licorice and bleach. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's getting better by the moment. Sounds so good. 
I can smell the clove too. All right, ready? Whoo, that is strong on the licorice. It like crawls into your mouth like for bugs, but not in a bad mm. way. Oh, yeah, no. Bugs crawling in your mouth could be good or bad. Yeah, that's my experience. Sip number two. Here we go. So it's intense at first, but once the bugs crawl in and they like settle, you know that front piece where you put the thermometer when you take your temperature under your tongue? Under your tongue? That's where it settles and it just sits there and it's really nice and mellow once it starts to sit. I'm imagining just a violent flavor running and then hiding underneath your tongue so you can't get rid of it. Yeah, that's that's fair. Oh. But but it but oh, it, tra- it it transforms like oh this oh. is perfect. Met- Kafka metamorphosis, but the other way around. Yeah, it's bugs into your mouth and then it transforms into something nice. This is the weirdest tier V you've ever <laughs> given. <laughs> Look, I'm pulling from what comes into my head. No, oh, that yeah, I mean that's how thoughts work. Oh, You're really? nailing it. Third one. All right. Come on. That means a rating. You've trained me. Yep. Man. The suspense. I mean, it's it's a thumbs up. Ugh, only for you. It's a thumbs up. Just straight up? It's a lingering thumbs up. Yeah. Because that's the whole point of it. I feel like this is, it, it does feel medicinal, but not in a bad way, which I know you never believe me on. Yeah. I don't even, I don't need to taste this one to know I'm a thumbs no, down. No, you wouldn't. You would, you would hate it. Hate it. But to all my, um... Older gents and ladies and um, <laughs> foreigners, you'd love it. Lingering thumbs up. We had a question at work, a t- an icebreaker team building question that said, what old people habits do you have? <laughs> and I knocked it out of the park. <laughs> so, you know, I wish licorice had been on there, but it wasn't. I knocked it out of the park. I said, hold up, you guys got 10 minutes? And I just started listing everything that I do. Perfect. Just my day, yeah. So licorice is not on there. Maybe someday. Maybe I'll grow to like it in another 40 years. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, special listener, for sending the the licorice bleeps. That was (laughs) thumbs up for Alana. (laughs) All right. We are back to our normal format, so no no more more spooky. No more ghosts. Just straight up women usually murdering. Sometimes not, as, but today I'm giving you... As for a good reason. I mean, we don't support <laughs> no! murder here. No, Stop we don't it. support we, murder. We haven't even started yet, and yep. you're already saying, if it's for a good reason, rein it in. <laughs> Look, I got to put my cape away. Okay. Ugh, such a vigilante. I'm giving you today a woman that you are going to love to hate. Oh. oh. Um, yeah, you love to hate. You're not going to identify with her. It's, you're going it's to hate no, her. It's uh, no Bonnie... No, no. <sighs> Love her. Right. She, this woman's amazing. All right. So, Lofi Louise Pressler was born in Louisiana. Hold on. What's yep, her first name? Lofi, L-O-F-I-E. But she goes by Louise. So we'll be saying Louise for the rest of the Lofi, day. Lofi Louise. Mm-hmm. In Louisiana. Bienville, is that how you say it? Mm-hmm. She was born September 20th, 1880, and she was born to a pretty wealthy family. Her father was a successful newspaper publisher, and her mother stayed at home with the three girls. Okay. And Louise is smack dab in the middle of these three little ladies. And the family's wealthy enough that they can afford to send all three of their daughters to private school, which if you think about it, in the late 1800s, that's actually probably pretty well to do because hmm. they're three females getting an education. That's true. And into their teenage years. Unfortunately, Louise was a little bit of a kleptomaniac and she got expelled for stealing. Jeez. Starting young. That's early. Yes. She's also rumored to be very promiscuous. And this is, we're talking the age of 15. There's nothing on her before the age of 15, so I can't. What did she do? Show her ankles? No. Sleeping with boys and men around town. Wow. Yeah, which usually is a sign of something else that had happened previously, but there's nothing to talk about if she experienced any kind of trauma hmm. or anything like that. But she's rumored to be girls just quite the seductress. Yeah, girls want to have fun, that's for sure. Yeah, so she's expelled, and her hmm. father sends her to boarding school, hoping to get her back on the right track, right? It doesn't work. 
It does not work. She's quickly kicked out of boarding school and returned home. For stealing? Yeah. And sleeping? <laughs> so, no, the sleeping was fine. She can sleep as long as, as she a wants. man and a woman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sleeping as a man and a woman. She's only 15. She's okay. sleeping with older men. Well, that part this should be dangerous. Current. Dangerous. But unfortunately for the men, it actually ended up being more dangerous. <laughs> so at this young age, she's described as quite the beauty. Slim, blue-eyed, and honey-haired by the oh. Ukiah Republican press. Yes. Honey-haired. I don't know how long she held on to that description, but for the okay. moment, that's what oh, we're I working with. I cannot wait. What's happening here? She gets sent home. So her parents are probably thinking, right? They're sitting there probably thinking, she's 15, 16 years old. We just got to wait two more years, and then we can and pawn her off on some other guy, yeah. right? Like, then yeah. she'll be somebody else's problem, and she'll settle down. It doesn't actually work like that. Louise just does whatever Louise wants to do. She goes out all hours of the night. It is kind of an Anne Bonny spirit. It's really not. Give it okay. a minute. Let it develop. Okay. Yeah. It's crawling in your mouth now. Let it find its place under, under your tongue before you move <laughs> Let's forward. Let's back. Thank you. So she's just not listening at all. Just does whatever she wants. She doesn't care. Now, the sources vary throughout this entire story. The, fir the first point of contention is when she got married for the first time. Okay. Several sources believe that she didn't get married yet, but several sources believe that she married a man named Russell Anthony, who is nine years her senior, which when you're... I'm assuming about 16 years old is quite a gap. Yeah, that's a big gap. They ran away to Texas. Oh. She immediately cheated on him, and he oh. sent her back. Okay. Yeah. Did they get like, divorced? Okay, we're done here. Yeah, I, think they, I believe that okay. that's what happened. They got divorced. Now, the reason I believe this to be true is because there's a book written named The Search for Lofi Louise, written by Helen B. Anthony, who in the bio for the author bio is said to be Russell Anthony's daughter, and that Louise was Russell's first wife. Whoa. And she wrote a book on it. So I tend to think that this was probably just super short-lived and yeah. no record of it, but that it did happen. Okay. So she's got this one under her belt. She's back home. He sends her back in. She's back. Much to her right. parents' dismay. Yeah, they're not pleased. So in 1903, Louise marries, for sure, salesman Henry Bosley in New Orleans. Mr. Bosley. Sorry. Louise has a taste for the finer things, right? She grew up pretty wealthy, but Henry's a salesman, and I don't think that he's providing the life that she wishes. Oh, boy. A salesman in those days, you're going door to door, going Ugh. town to town, and she's traveling with him to start. So they're staying oh. in boarding houses, cheap hotels. Traveling salesman. It's not fun. They get at this one boarding house and they're there for temporarily, obviously, but they're there for an extended amount of time. And all of the valuables for the other boarders go missing. And so they search the entire boarding house. Huh. And guess where they find them? In Louise and Henry's room. <sighs> and Louise gives a very tearful explanation and apology and gives everything back. And they end up feeling sorry for Louise. And they say, okay, we're not going to call the cops. You've had it rough, you poor little wow. thing. Wow. Just, you're going to have to leave. So Henry and Girl's Louise. Girl's got problems. Girl is skilled. Give it a minute. They pack up their stuff and they move along. They get to their next town. And this time, Louise thinks that she'll just take a few sample pieces of jewelry from the jewelry store. Like it's a Costco's, you know, and they've got cheese out. She just helps herself. <laughs> I love samples, but not if the person that talks to me. Okay. okay. Take note. <laughs> Look away. No eye contact while I eat my cheese. <laughs> anyway, this time, because it's a store, the police are called. Right. And you can't do she's that. Actually, yeah, and she's <laughs> actually brought up on charges. So okay. she goes to court. Okay. She goes to court. But don't you worry. She's got a tearful apology yeah. in her pocket. And she pulls it right on out. And how could a woman do that? Oh, and such a such a cute little pretty southern yeah. woman. How? Yeah. Yeah. And she lays it on thick and the oh, judge boy. feels sorry for her. Yep. And he gives her a suspended sentence and she walks out. Y'all see the pattern here. It's happened oh, it's so many times. Starting. Why aren't these women actresses? But like it's like in so many cases we've covered. This is what happens. I know, I know. So she she's free to go. 
Now, Henry is still traveling. He's still working. Louise isn't traveling with him, at least at this moment, and so she's staying home. Henry comes home early, and Louise is with another man. Nice. Obviously. She's keeping up her two favorite hobbies. She needs to be (laughs) stealing and sex. Like, that's where it's at for her. (laughs) He's so devastated, he checks into a hotel, and he's found dead two (gasps) two years later. (laughs) That's terrible. Two days later, excuse me. Two days later, he's found dead. It was ruled as death by suicide. He had a gun in his hand. But put a pin in that if you feel that way in 40 minutes. Louise doesn't seem too broken up about it. She quickly sells his stuff, Mm. gets the money, and she moves on to her next Uh gig. I think she's escalated to another hobby. She goes to Boston. There are so many different accounts of what she did in Boston. Some say that she went around gallivanting saying that she was a socialite who had a ton of money and Mm. inherited all this wealth from her family really an inventing anna vibe if you've watched that show is that the chess player no nice nice though no queen's gambit nope i haven't seen either (laughs) oh no okay (laughs) bring her back no inventing anna is a true story based on a true story on netflix about a woman who pretended to be a really wealthy woman and got all these people to invest. Oh, got so anyway. it. Wait, but that's a big move, especially in the early 1900s. Oh, yeah, hop on a train. She got time. Like, why Boston? Okay. So, because nobody, so nobody knows her. Hello. Yeah, but you could go to New York. She's got quite the reputation down there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So, I'm not sure if she was living with a wealthy family and pretending to also be rich and then running Mm. up their accounts at the store. That seemed to be one thing that she was doing. It also was rumored that she just had kind of a man situation where she had a rich older guy. Sugar daddy. Yeah. You know, taking care of everything. It also was rumored that she was an escort. So I'm not sure which one of those is correct. Either way, she's conning people left and right. She steals a whole bunch of stuff. She's running up tabs all over town, just doing the same thing that she knows, just doing what she does best, yep. really. And she's said to be stealing like these rings and these necklaces, and she'll just keep what she likes and then sell what she doesn't, which shows you how much she just believes she can get away with stuff. Yeah. She just doesn't She doesn't care. even care. She Not just thinks, I like this ring. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> I'll just cry my way out of it. Bye. Yeah. Anyway, people catch on. But they're embarrassed, which makes me believe a little bit the escort story because how are you going to say to your wife, right? Yeah. Oh, your necklace is gone? Ooh. When you were visiting your sister, I had an escort over here. Sorry. Right. I'm not sure. But either way, they're embarrassed. So they don't press charges. They just tell her to leave and she leaves again. But with all the merchandise, right? Or she has to give it back? It didn't didn't specify. She'd sold most of it. Right. Honestly. So it's gone. (sighs) She skips town. She goes to Texas. Oh, my God. In Texas. Okay. She's a world traveler. These are big bouncy balls. Like, maybe go in the middle to Iowa or something. Chicago. Why? Chicago. Why do you want her to go to Chicago? That's a long trip. Again, this woman is so diabolical, and you're you're worried about the fact that she might have a long train ride. (laughs) Oh, it just is like she was in New Orleans and now she's going to Boston. Oh, back down to Texas. Let's take, let's go like the baby steps. Let's do it smarter. Irrelevant. Irrelevant. Okay. okay. She's in Texas. Take the long train ride. What do I say? She quickly finds a rich oil man. Yeah. How would you say this name? His, okay. Here's how his name is Joe. Oil his last is how name. They say it down here. Oil. What? That's how they say oil. Not in what, Texas, what are but you saying? in Louisiana. Oil. Oh, oil. Okay, whatever. She's in Texas. How would you say Joe's last name? A-P-P-E-L. Appel or Apple? Yeah. Appel. Appel. All right. Well, I've heard it both ways, so I don't know. (laughs) Joe, he's rich, and he seems to be Louise's match. He's rich, and he loves that he's rich. He has diamond buttons. That just seems ridiculous. What? That seems unsafe. Like, you're really flaunting it. Really flaunting it. He has diamonds on his belt. He has diamond buttons. He's got diamond jewelry. He's really be easy to steal. I could be walking down the street, see the diamond button guy, pull it off, and run. Uh, well, 
Louise had the first part of that in her mind, but she doesn't run. Instead, she leans on in to old Joe here. Okay. And it gets pretty hot and heavy for about a week, and then wow. Joe turns up dead. Oh, my God. hmm Shot. Dead. And a lot of his diamonds are missing. Huh. Louise gets arrested <sighs> again. She goes to court. She's actually brought up on trial, and she's in front of a jury, and she explains her story to the jury. This beautiful, sweet little southern girl had to shoot Joe because he tried to attack her and rape her, and she had to defend herself. Mm. Yeah. I'm getting real, actually, because you said Chicago, cell block tango vibes. You know, he had it coming, that song. No. You don't know that no song? No idea what you're talking about. Oh. Well, if you've seen Chicago, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, so sh- no. So she claims it's self-defense. She had to do it. <laughs> the jury not only lets her leave, but they applaud her on her way out for being so brave. Wow. And nobody seems to care about the diamonds. That who, psh, psh, Don't, let's not, let's not, this poor woman's been through enough. Right. Okay. So she gets away with. And I mean, I support what she does. If it was real. That it was not real. Right. But I'm just saying, but that discredits real. I know. People, which is extra, okay. extra terrible. Yeah. Extra yeah. terrible. Because women who are actually in this situation yeah. Yeah. often. Don't get believed. Don't, are not believed. Yeah. And that's why this this one makes it so extra uh, terrible. I agree. So she. Montia Lofi. What did you say? I'm on Tia Lofi. Isn't that her name? Tia Lofi? Oh, I'm on to you, Lofi. Okay. I thought you were speaking Italian again. No, I'm back. <laughs> I'm on to you, Lofi. I was like, I didn't understand what's happening. Yeah. It sounded, it sounded Irish. Irish. <laughs> I know. I was Irish. It's very, very confused. She moves, or she's still in Texas. I mean, she's, I guess, a hero. She marries another man in 1913 by the name of Harry. Fr- Diamond Buttons. What? Diamond Buttons? No, Ruby yeah, I think he had regular. Regular oh. buttons. His okay. name was Harry for Harry Ferrot. Now Harry isn't necessarily Louise's type, meaning he's not a rich, rich. old guy <laughs> who she can shoot, I guess. And so it's a little unclear looking back. Why? Why would Louise pair herself with Harry? He just works in a hotel. He just has a hotel job. Because well, he steals from that, the rooms. With that hotel job, he has access to all the rooms, and Louise knows that. And pretty soon, $20,000 worth of valuables go missing. Once it's discovered, it goes missing, I believe, from the safe that would have been the central location where actual customers would have come down and given their valuables to be held safely in one spot, right? Mm -hmm. So Harry immediately gets blamed because... Right. He's the one in charge of of this, it appears. And he's devastated because he really holds his job very seriously and he would never do something like this. Yeah. He doesn't own the hotel. He just works there. Uh, So the police look into it and they honest to God believe that he had nothing to do with it and that it was Louise, but they have nothing to prove it. Everything is gone. They have no evidence. She just acts like, I don't know. I don't know. I didn't do nothing. Harry is so devastated. That amidst all of this hubbub, he also turns up dead. Ruled death by suicide. But it wasn't. That's two now. That's three. Well, one was self-defense, two by suicide. Yeah, I don't buy it. Right? Louise hightails it out of there. She goes to Denver. She's moving on. She quickly finds a new man, successful salesman named Richard Pete. Hold on. Yeah. Why are they not looking at any fingerprints? I'm sure they did. The gun was in their hand. Right. But she would have had to hold it to do it. Yeah, but if it was their gun from the home, you would expect that her fingerprints would be on it as well, right? Okay. I don't know. Nobody's looking real close at any of this. Let's just say that. Yeah. So 1914, she gets married again. And her and Richard P. are married and it's apparently a very big social event. This is number four. Number three or number four, depending on how you're depending counting. On the first if you're one. counting, okay. If you count the first guy, this girl moves around. At this point, it's believed that her family has cut her off. Okay. Because her family knows the common thread, so I don't yeah. know who's on her guest list. But they don't know the murder side of it. Oh, they know. They probably 
suspect. Really? Because they would have known, right, that two of her husbands have died mysteriously and then one of her boyfriends. Anyway, Louise and Richard, everybody thinks, oh, maybe, maybe this is it. Maybe she's settling down. They have a child. They name her Betty in 1916. Wow, first child. Okay. Yeah, they've got a daughter. Maybe she's turning over a new leaf. Maybe it's time. But in 1920, things don't go great for Richard. His business Uh starts to tank. And Louise doesn't love that. Yeah. That's not really for her. (laughs) The story goes that Richard came downstairs one day and Louise had a suitcase. And he said, oh, are you going on a trip, dear? And she said, nah, I'm going to go to Los Angeles. Bye, Richard. I don't know if she took Betty. Some sources say she did take Betty initially and then sent her back. Other sources say she never took Betty. Gross. Well, I mean, really, it's probably best. It's for the best. Stay behind. Yeah. Yeah, At this point, she's in Texas and she's going to Los Angeles. She's in no. She's in Denver. She's she's going to Los Angeles. Okay. Is that mileage appropriate? Yes. Here we go. Texas to Colorado, perfectly reasonable. (sighs) Colorado, L.A. Like these are the steps that we should be taking instead of ping ponging around the country. Again, the steps you should be taking are not murdering men. Well, duh. I have to say it with you. But as you're moving around. Oh, Lord. Anyway, so she's on to her new gig. Her new gig happens to be a man named Mr. Jacob Denton, who is a mining executive and hmm. what would be a millionaire today. Yeah. On May 17th, Jacob puts an ad in the paper. Some say the ad was for live and help. Some say the ad was to rent out his 14-room mansion at 675 South Catalina Street in Los Angeles, which is now a parking garage. Where in LA is it? It's where you used to live, by where you used to live. Which one? The latest one? Uh, Koreatown. Oh, okay. Cool. He's asking $350 a month. So it's a steal, (laughs) guys. To have a mansion. (laughs) Dang, dude. On May 18th, Louise shows up to the house and agrees to whatever the ad was for, either to be the live-in help or to rent it. Now, Jacob was either going to live in the main part of the house or uh-huh. live in the apartment, depending on which story we're going with here. And Lofi was like, I'll do you one better. I'll be an escort as well. No, hold up, hold up. Come on, they just met. <laughs> Give you a little background on Jacob. He had been married twice. His first wife had actually, they'd had a child together. So he has a 15-year-old daughter named Frances, but they're divorced. Okay. Then his second wife and his second daughter had died from influenza recently, right? Because it's the pandemic. 1920s. It hit the world so hard. 50 million people died worldwide from this influenza. Get your flu shot, folks. So his wife had just died. This is May. His wife had just died in March. His daughter had died earlier during the pandemic. His wife died later in March. Yeah. And Louise thinks, oof, here we go. A slightly older man. He's not that much older than Louise at this point. Louise is 40 at this point. Okay. And he's not that much older than her, but he's around 50 years old. And he's widowed. He's grief-stricken. He's a millionaire. Perfect. Checks all her boxes. And so they immediately start up, you mm-hmm. know, as a man and a woman. And they have a very passionate week, okay? It's always and a week. She's, this is, it's I like know. a week is her thing. That's it. That's all she could do. Seven days. And then she gets bored. Bye. Now they have this passionate week, and she's ready to get married. She thinks that she can get him to marry her. Because it's a millionaire. Right. P- first problem is she's still married to Richard, but we'll get into the details <laughs> later. <laughs> right. The second probably bigger problem is that Jacob's not interested in marrying her. That's probably the biggest hurdle she has to overcome. Oh. He's not as much of a pushover as she thought. Okay. And she keeps her cool, though. She doesn't stop this affair or get upset. She just uses it as she can. So she moves in on May 23rd, and she gets him to bring the rent down to $75. From $350? (laughs) That's a big cut. <laughs> I paid for a parking space in Los Angeles for $75. I mean, you can't Correct. rent a whole mansion. <laughs> Correct. I We had to pay 110 a month in yeah. our Koreatown apartment to have a parking yes. space yes. seven blocks away from our apartment. So yes, yes. Take that in. Yeah. So she's gifted. Okay. She's getting a bargain, guys. She moves in May 23rd. On May 30th, 
Jacob asks his niece to do a can you just do a quick inventory of the valuables in the home? Which oh, makes no. me think maybe some things have gone missing. I don't know. And he's noticed, yeah. I'm just connecting the dots. I mean, why would you ask? Like, that's a real random thing to ask your niece of all things. Yeah. Coincidentally, June 1st is the last day that anybody saw Jacob alive. Oh, no. Yeah. But why? On June 2nd. Louise coordinates with the gardener to have a truckload of dirt delivered to the house. And she says, just dump it in the basement. What? And she says, I swear to God, this is what she said. I'm growing mushrooms. Is this woman your best friend? Just take a nibble. Get on down there, Alana. Wow. I mean, basement would be a good place to grow it, especially. Well, stop. Okay. No. no, 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 right, right, right. Not, not, not the point. Do you think she had mushrooming with confidence at uh, the book <laughs> that you have? I think she had something else with confidence. I'll tell you that. Yeah. Yes. That. Yes, the confidence in this woman, because right now her apparently her looks have faded over the years. She's a little only bit. 40. I know, but being 16 and being 40, I don't think... Yeah, I guess there's a different now the, appeal, Now maybe. they're starting to describe her a little differently than the first oh, description no. I gave you. You know, it's whatever. But ladies, confidence is everything. Yeah. She, I mean, this woman is going around getting men wrapped around her little finger <laughs> within yeah. minutes. Confidence is everything. Anyway, so she's growing her mushrooms. Yeah. She also asked for some cement because Jacob is so upset about his first wife that he asked her to get rid of all of her things and she's going to no. bury them in a cement hole. Okay? Nope. No. Nope. I know. It's a weird way to get rid of things. Anyway, Louise is just living her life. She's in this mansion. She is cashing some checks yeah. or trying to at least. Right. She's running up some tabs on saying she's Mrs. Denton. And nobody knows he's, she's, he's dead. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. She's throwing parties. She's using his brand new Cadillac. Wow. She is renting out other rooms of the mansion and having the checks made out to her. She has contacted other properties that Jacob owns and is asking them to send the rent checks to her directly. Uh-huh. Yeah, she's pawning things left and right. Okay. And she goes to the bank to try to cash a check and get access to the security deposit box. While she's there, the teller notices that the signature doesn't match Mm -hmm. Mr. Denton's signature and asks about it. And Louise says, oh, that's because his arm was shot off. So he had to sign it with the other hand. Sorry. And they don't believe her and she says listen he's so embarrassed and he just isn't going to come out until he gets his prosthetic fixed oh my god this is so bad yeah yeah and so i mean people start asking neighbors yeah you know bank tellers things and she has a story some variation of this story every time sometimes the arm was shot off sometimes it was cut off with a sword by a spanish woman it, she on uh, she's on drugs. Sometimes he also lost a leg, so he's in hiding until he can get his prosthetics and heal, and then he'll be back. And she's taking care of things for him. Obviously, come on, guys. You know, here. Let me just give you a little aside. The other day, <laughs> I said to my coworker, "I was like, sometimes I wish I had no remorse." But this is what happens, folks, when you have no remorse. You turn into a sociopathic killer. You don't. You just don't care. She just doesn't care. And she's not even very creative with her lack of caring. This is ridiculous. So she's got this story floating around town. She's living it up. YOLO. She must be so convincing. So once the cracks start to happen is Frances, if you remember, Jacob's daughter, the teenage daughter. Mm -hmm. She is expecting to, I've heard, you know, hear from her father or to see her father. He was supposed to visit her. Also, he sends her money every month. And so that money stops. Uh, And she reaches out. There you go. Some sources say she reached out to the cousin who did the inventory. Some say she reached out to Jacob's lawyer. But she reaches out and they ask the lawyer to, can you look into this? Go go to the house, check it out. And he makes a call and Luis gives him this, you know, oh, he's busy. 
He's really busy. Sorry, he's on some business trips. And he calls the police. Louise uses this opportunity. She's been there for a few few months, solid months. She spent the summer there. She decides it's probably time to go back to Denver, just coincidentally. She might want a jet. So she okay. leaves and she goes okay. back home to Richard. But but wait, the dirt is in the basement. Mm-hmm. Why didn't she bury him in the ground? I don't know why she does anything. There's so much more. But it's gross. Yeah, she's gross. He's not going to go into the ground. Think about it a few months after how gross it's going to be. Well, on September 23rd, 19... This says 1902, so that can't be right. 1920. (laughs) (laughs) She went back in time. 1920, in a basement closet, or the mushroom garden, as it's known, they find the body of Jacob Denton. All of his arms and legs are intact, but he has a single bullet at the... Where's the dirt? He has a single bullet at the base of his skull that fractured his spinal cord and caused him death instantly. Well, you can't. That would be really hard to do it yourself. I'm just saying. He has also been strangled and wrapped in a quilt. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, another thing. Did she get help? Like, how big is she? Like, how is she doing all of this? That's a good point. I don't know. overpowering a lot. Well, maybe not overpowering, but sneaking up. But then she has to drag bodies places. And, like, she has to set up stuff. Yeah, that's probably why he was in a quilt. Yeah. And so it's easier to drag. Okay. Easier to drag. She seemed like a strong... Okay. Woman, and she I means she's no bell gunness. We're not lifting pianos, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, the police reach out to Louise in Denver because hey, <laughs> and she has, of course, guys, there's a Spanish woman who cut his arm off with a sword. Did you not hear that story? That's what happened. And they say, Well, we found his body and he has all his limbs. And she's still saying, well, there's a Spanish sword woman running why? around. Why? Why is she, like, <laughs> why that story, girl? I don't know. Let it go. Well, one, they don't buy it because it's insane. Yes. Right? Correct. Two, if that's accurate, then why do you have his furs, his silvers? Why have you pawned his rings? Why did you have expensive gowns made? And three, why is the gun that was used to kill him in the closet where you stayed? Just a couple questions. Good job, Luffy. So then Louise says, well, that's not Denton. That's not Jacob. That's a body double. Jacob killed him and then he ran away. What is happening? I don't know. She's, she's, she's gone really, off the deep end. This is no, really longer, no longer believable. They don't believe her. What? And the trial starts <laughs> January 21st, 1921. The media calls her the Tiger Woman. I don't know why. It seems like a pretty cool nickname, but I don't know why they call her the Tiger Isn't Woman. Isn't there something about stripes? Like count your stripes. Count your stripes. Oh, I love that saying. Isn't there a saying, count the tiger stripes? I think it's like a tiger earns her stripes, but I yeah, don't think it applies. But that's not this. It does yep. This no. isn't it. No. No. She should not be earning these stripes. <laughs> so Luis does not take the stand and remains completely composed, really uninterested. That's that doesn't work. You know, how you would expect her to be. Occasionally batting her eyes or looking at her husband, Richard, who's still around, comes running to her side every time. Of course. He believes in her innocence. And they will whisper, you know, a few things and then she'll just calmly stare. Other than that, she's pretty much just sitting there, gloved hands, prim and proper, in a blue sailor suit. Do you know what those are? Not like an actual sailor, but it's a dress with usually like the lapels along the front and it comes down into a tie. Yeah, with the white and blue. And she had, she'd wear a hat with a veil over her face. Oh mm-hmm. boy. So the DA says, Luis killed Denton, right? She forged his name on checks, sold his belongings, charged things to his accounts, tried to sell his house for God's sakes, and is now claiming that he's still alive. Come on, guys. Obviously, she killed him. The defense says that this woman from Spain was just be bopping around LA with Stop a sword. It. They're taking like what kind of crackpot <laughs> lawyers are taking the story of the goddamn Spanish woman? <laughs> Here are a couple witnesses who saw her. February 1921, the court is packed for closing statements. People are in the halls. Prosecution <laughs> says Louise is, and this is a quote, a ghoul and a murderess. End quote. <laughs> and he has on hand heirlooms from Denton's second daughter, like her baby shoes, the one who died, her baby Mm. shoes, her baby comb, her baby clothes that Louise said she put into the cement hole, but really she pawned them. Seriously? She pawned that? Yes. And he pulls all this stuff up and all the women in the courtroom apparently start crying with the exception of Louise because, you know, 
remorse, lack of. Yeah, no, no thanks. And the DA, Thomas Lee Woolwine, that's a weird name, but I think believe that's correct, says, quote, good women can't stand this, but evil women can. I mean, he has the point. Okay. Meaning the fact that you would sell a dead yeah, child's right. things for money. That, that's mm. crosses that's pretty the sociopath low. line. And the DA is doing his best here. But remember, it's still 1921. So the fact that Louise is a woman, he mm. kind of has his work cut out for him. And the jurors have been asked when they're doing the deliberation to pick the jury. One of the questions they are asked a few times is, can you fairly judge a woman for a crime like this? He wants what? to make sure each person can. They don't want... They don't want them to show her mercy simply because oh, she's oh, a female. Oh, got it. Well, that's a good judge. Yeah. yeah. We're progressing. Yeah. And the defense is playing this the opposite way. Yeah. This is an excerpt from the Los Angeles Evening Express. Ready? Oh, my God. I can't wait. The white neck from the woman at the dock rose from her immaculate lace collar. Her Weird. cheek was softly pink with the eye caught its outline. The so thick waves of copper brown hair rippled back to the clasp that held it below the hat brim. And I thought of the defense's words, do you want to hang Mrs. Pete by the neck until she is dead? Oh, my God. Somebody <laughs> yeah. just got out of writing workshop class and got all excited. Yeah. Now, the defense says Denton was strangled first, then shot, and then whoever did this brought him back home. That seems insane. <laughs> that seems like a lot of extra work right. for whoever this mysterious Spanish woman is, but that's what they're going with. Anyway, on February 17th, 1921, Louise is sentenced to life in prison. See ya. Long overdue. Richard is devastated. Richard, put the pieces together. Can you guess what happened to him? But she's in jail. I know, but it still happened. 1924, death by suicide. Louise used that moment to tell reporters that her husband took his life because he was so upset over her wrongful conviction. But she was in jail. I believe he really did die by suicide. Hmm. The warden said that Louise was going around bragging to all the inmates how she has so much control over men. That's That gross. they can't live without her. Mm-hmm. Ew. Uh, you're no Ann Bonnie. I told you. No. Would it shock you to believe that we are only halfway into this story? That there's um, so much more? Yes. I know. <laughs> Hold on. She's sentenced to life in prison, right? Cool. 19, she's in San Quentin. 1933, she's moved to the California Institution for Women, which sounds nice, but it's just a women's prison. Okay. And she's on her best behavior, model prisoner. Oh, I'm Works sure. Works in the garden. Mushrooms, probably. <laughs> Writes in the newspaper. Dental assistant. She is just Random. perfect. Perfection. But she's still her old self because she's told a reporter on one visit that there really should be a way to separate the more refined criminals like herself from oh, the ones yeah. who have been close to slime and filth. Bro, Those are her words. you murder people. You are slime and filth. Humanitarian of the year. 18 <laughs> years later, Louise P. is granted parole in 1939. Now, some people tried to stop this, particularly one journalist who wrote several letters to the parole board saying this is a terrible idea. The parole board said, get over it. Prison reforms people. And it does sometimes. And it does. Not, not her. Not in this case of a sociopath, okay? Louise is released into... 18 years did not change her. That's crazy. But yeah, sociopath. Yeah, into the charge of Jesse Marcy. And she was living help because there are conditions when you're paroled, right? She's not just yeah. free to go. So right. she has to have a job. She has mm -hmm. to have... A place mm -hmm. to live. She has to check in. Apparently, oh a few no. weeks later, Marcy dies. No. Of natural causes, they say. But, I mean, can anybody believe that at this point? No problem. The timing on this, I'm not sure which came first. There is a brief period where Louise is working at a restaurant, and she has a coworker who's her best friend. That best friend happened to go missing, but nobody knows what happened to her. Her place seemed to have been robbed. But whatever. Uh, then she moves on into – she actually stays with her own parole officer, Emily Latham, who dies unexpectedly shortly after Louise moves in. Bro, how is she doing this? I don't know. Now, people think that it was a fall or a stroke. No one said it was Louise. Maybe she was pushed down the stairs. Have you thought about that? Yes. I don't know. But everybody this woman come in, comes in contact with dies somehow. 
It is shocking. Why aren't police making the connection? For one, she's changed her name. They've let her change her name because her name, Louise Pete, at the time was so famous. So she goes by Anna Lee. I don't, that, to me, it seems like, well, maybe dig a little deeper, but whatever. But also, like, she's on parole. Like, she should be on the top of your books, no matter what name she's under. You'd think. So, Anna Lee so now. This is in 1938. That's when she was released. 1939 was when she first released, but this We're is some time. We're World War II, folks. Yeah, yeah. God, am I ready for that? Do I have World War II facts? We <laughs> we sailed past World War One without her saying anything. I was hoping. I was thinking about it. So, so Anna Lee, aka Louise, moves now to the Pacific Palisades, which is a really nice oh, yeah. part of LA. Really nice. And she's again live in help. She's living with a couple named Margaret and Arthur Logan. Now, Mar Margaret has been Louise's friend for decades. She actually took Betty in during the trial and watched oh, her. Wow. It said though that when Richard died, I believe Betty went to a children's home. That's messed up. Yeah. Margaret believes Louise is innocent and wrongly convicted. That's what she believes. Margaret and her husband have a unique situation. Margaret works really, really hard. She's a part time real estate agent, plus, she has a regular, like, nine to five job. Mm -hmm. But I believe she works a second shift, like a late shift. And her husband, Arthur, he's 74 and he has early stages of dementia. So he needs help. He can't be alone. Okay. So Louise is going to live with them. She's going to watch Arthur while Margaret's at work. And everybody, you know, it's a win-win. She's got a good setup. She lives in a nice part of town. She lives in a nice house. She gets paid. But on May 2nd, 1944, Louise secretly gets married again to a man named Lee Borden oh Judson. Now, she keeps this marriage quiet because she's not supposed to be married. That's apparently a condition of her parole. Okay. She tells Lee that she doesn't want Margaret to know because it happened so quick. I'm, I'm guessing a week, but I, nobody said. <laughs> she does love that seven-day period. Yeah, seven days is all you need. Seven days of Louise. And then <laughs> she tells Lee that, you know, she works for Margaret and helps Margaret out, but she doesn't, Lee doesn't know anything about her past. Hmm. Okay. All right. So she's See keeping those parts of her world separate because Margaret yeah. knows everything about her past and she doesn't want Lee to know and Lee, you know, vice versa. Yeah. So she starts, she no longer lives in the house, but she'll go there to watch Arthur when needed. She lives with Lee secretly. Now, on June 1st, 1944 now. Wow. Margaret goes missing. Not your best friend. Yeah. Louise has been talking around town to the neighbors saying that Arthur's getting worse. He's getting, she's been building this lie up for months saying that Arthur's dementia is getting really okay. bad and he's really violent and poor, poor Margaret. This is not oh. true. This is not accurate. But Margaret goes missing. Margaret had a real estate deal that was going to be a good investment. And so she told Louise about it. And Louise said, hey, I actually have an inheritance or a piece of property, some sort of funds that she now had access to that she was out of prison that was in Richard's name previously. So hmm. she tells Louise that – or so Louise tells Margaret that she wants to go in on this deal with her. The problem is Margaret has to put down the down payment and then she has to make the payments on the property until it sells. Okay. So Margaret does the initial investment. And then it comes time for that first payment, which Louise is supposed to pay, and hmm. Louise dodges it. Hmm. Okay? So it said that that scenario caused Margaret concern, and she asked for Louise to meet with her to go over the finances so that they can make this first payment. It's also... And she was never seen again. Exactly. It's also thought that at that point in time, Margaret also noticed that some of the checks in her checking account had been cashed by somebody other than her. Huh. Well, who has a habit of doing that? Margaret goes missing. <sighs> Come on, people. A few days after Margaret's disappearance, Louise has Arthur committed of course. to an institution for early stage dementia. Of course. Louise and Lee move into the house full time. Louise tells Lee that they're house sitting, that Margaret's on a trip. Um, she did. Yeah. Neighbors start asking questions. Don't worry, Louise can explain this. You know, where's Margaret? What's going on? Louise explains that Arthur got so violent which she'd been saying all along, hello. Yep. She's really been worried about her friend. He became so violent that he bit off Margaret's nose. Ew. And Margaret was having reconstructive surgery, and she was too embarrassed okay. no, to come out. No, the story doesn't work. We've just experienced this. Right? It didn't work the first time. Why are you using this again? What is She's with so her? so weird. I know. Yuck. And Maybe she has a weird fascination. Lee has some questions as well. He's noticing things too as he's moving in. Like, hey, why is there blood on the carpet? 
Hmm. Oh, I had a nosebleed. Hey, why is there a bullet hole behind this picture? Arthur went crazy <laughs> one night and shot at us. It was really scary. That's why he's in a, a home. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> Luis is forging checks in Margaret's name, cashing in on their accounts, living off of the Logans. Six months after being committed, Arthur dies, which you have to believe he died way sooner in that place than he right. would have at home. Yeah, and he died right. with not one single visitor thinking that his own wife committed him and then never saw him again. That's terrible. That's criminal. Luis says, donate the body to science. Okay. I mean, it's a, it's a cool thing to do, but it's not appropriate. Stop it. No. Wrong answer, young lady. <laughs> it's not appropriate in this situation. <sighs> but, but I might donate my body to science. Fine. And you know why that's okay? Because that is your choice. I didn't <laughs> I have you agreed. committed against your will, kill Chris, and then donate your body to science. Do you see the difference? Can you imagine you killing Chris? No. I mean, I'd really have to sneak up on him. <laughs> You'd have to do a <laughs> cotton situation. He could overpower me pretty quick. <laughs> anyway, back anyway, to the Chris point. Chris, okay. <laughs> yeah, Chris, you're safe. I don't have, honestly, I just don't have the energy. Hide your soft parts. <laughs> Yeah, put on your neck guard. Put on your iron turtleneck, Chris. I'm coming for you. Anyway, weirdo. There is one story. I don't know if this is true, but I need to say it. There's one story that says the telegram came to the wrong address, like across the street, notifying yeah. them of Arthur's death. And so the neighbor walked it across the street to Louise. Louise got it, ran into her room, and came back out with a bunch of hats and started dancing around the room and then realized <laughs> that the neighbor was watching her. And the neighbor is looking at her as though she's insane. And Louise goes, oh, just trying on hats for his funeral. <laughs> Good one. Quick thinking. Wow. This woman is unbelievable. Now remember, Louise is still on parole, technically. So somebody has to be filing these reports right. and signing them. She has to turn in paperwork. So she's submitting the reports now about her and signing Margaret's name. Yeah. Now one parole officer notices her reports seem to be getting more complimentary as time passes, just really <laughs> better and better. And so she goes back. I don't I think it was a female, I can I'm not sure. See this. The officer goes back and pulls some of the first ones that came out and realizes that the signatures don't match. Oh, boy. Also, the bank is said to possibly get involved saying signatures don't match. Also, okay. an insurance company for life insurance being collected on Arthur gets involved. <sighs> signatures aren't matching all over town. Yeah. So on December 20th, investigators go to the Logan's house to pay Louise a visit. She's sticking to that nose story. God. Margaret will be back once it's healed, guys. She, It takes time to rebuild. Why? And says that, yes, okay, I you got me. I did forge the paper, but that's because Margaret told me to. She asked me to because she's, you know, recovering. Police search the house. One detective is just stepping back and taking the scene in, and he just has a weird feeling about an avocado tree. He just doesn't feel right about it. What? So he says to his men, go dig over there. Seriously? Yeah, the, the earth, I think it just seemed overly planted compared to the rest of the landscaping. Okay. There was flowers, there's trees, there was a new wall put around it. It just, the, hmm. I think that's probably what drew his attention to it. It's a good detective. Very quickly, and they find a foot. And they keep digging, and they find Margaret's body. Wait, was the foot separated? No, everything, she okay. was intact. It was just Got what it. they found first. Like, Got it. Inches down. It was not deep at all. Good job. Louise isn't really a hard worker. No, she's not. You know, she's not, she doesn't really dig a deep hole. Anyway, they find her there. Margaret is dead. She has been shot, but also beaten. No. Don't, Louise didn't do it. Okay, guys? Louise says Arthur went insane, beat Margaret up, shot her, and then all Louise did was bury the body because she knew how it would look if the investigators came to the house. They, of course, would blame her because of her first wrongful conviction. So that's all that happened. No. Police also find a gun in the house, and it happens to belong to Louise's mm -hmm. parole officer, Emily, and she had missing. taken it from the house after she died. God. Both Louise and Lee are arrested, both of them. All right. By January 12th, charges are dropped against Lee. They really believe Lee had nothing to do okay. with it. They believe Lee was clueless, honestly. It's almost surprising. Like, sometimes they will just always pin it on the guy. The day after Lee is freed, he takes his own life jumping off of a building or an or a stairwell. It was unclear. So he was So pushed. he, too, 
dies by suicide. But she, she did it. No, she's in jail. At least two of her husbands had to have died by suicide. You don't think there's any accomplice helping her in any of this that we just never found out about? I don't think so. Hmm. It's Isn't it unbelievable? It is unbelievable. So April 1945, the trial starts. This time, Louise takes the stand. She didn't take the stand for the first one because, you know, she kept talking about that Spanish woman. But this time, <laughs> she's in her 60s. She's an older right. woman, right? She's more sympathetic. She takes a stand. She says, yes, I buried the body. She gives them the story, right? She didn't want anyone to jump into conclusions. You know, it wasn't her. But she was lying with the nose thing. Yeah, I know. I don't, I don't know. Trying to cover Arthur's tracks, I guess. Anyway, not this time. May 28th, 1945, she's found guilty. This yes. time she is sentenced to death. Oh, she appeals, it gets denied, eight years to the day of her first parole on April 11th, 1947, Luis was executed at San Quentin at the age of 66, the second woman executed in the California gas chamber. There was a large crowd there to witness the execution, 80 people, was said. Okay, first of all, yes. gross yes. about the crowd. Luis was told to inhale deeply in order to have it move quickly, and she did, but it still took 10 minutes. That's disgusting. Why are they using gas chambers in the 60s? Wait, no, we're in the 50s. 47. 47. 47. That's like... I don't know. That's so not okay. I mean, I... What part? World War II just ended. Oh my God, are there World Wars? No, think of that. Put that together. And then we're committing our own citizens to death by gas chambers. Oh, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. That's, yeah. That's a little fun. I, I don't know that you want to get up on this with Louise. No, no. That's what I'm going to say. I'm just saying the the yeah. thing. Like she, she. I don't want to get into death penalty stuff, but like she definitely deserves to be put to, away. She should never, yeah, be let out. Never. She, she should ever, not be back ever, on the street ever, 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 ever. But just gas yeah. chamber is, that's, yeah, that's I'm not saying brutal. she didn't deserve it or did deserve it, but like that's just kind of crazy to me like it's better to have a firing squad you love a firing squad because it's quick i understand but you either you your punishments are stub your toe or firing squad there's no (laughs) middle ground for you there's no middle ground for you (laughs) anyway that is the story of wow louise good old loafy i mean there's like eight names louise bosley farut uh (laughs) pete judson yikes i don't like her at all. Yeah, because she's pretty terrible. I'm not a supporter. I would hope not. That's really terrible. She's a sociopath. Even with her mushroom gardening? <laughs> I think she's a, like a look up in your pocket dictionary sociopath. Yeah, and I I mean, I don't even think there were any mushrooms at all ever. So, no, sadly. Add that to the list of lies. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, so these poor men. And Margaret. I don't know how she does it. I don't know how. And Emily. You can have such an emotional hold over somebody that when you leave their life. Now, it's rumored that maybe it wasn't that the fact that she wasn't in their life anymore, but maybe the fact that they came to terms with the truth of what she had done and their reputation was ruined. I don't know. Which makes more sense to me than it being them missing Louise so much. But I don't know. I, I also, I don't believe that all four of those men died by suicide. I feel like the first two were probably set up by Louise. Absolutely. I'm convinced. I still think the other two, there is some bad business involved, but I don't know. I don't know. She was put away for those two, so she could not have done it herself. Right. She sucks. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, she's pretty brutal. But I thought that would be a nice one to ease us right back into regular. (laughs) You know? A nice light one. Yeah. 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 Perfect. This, God. Yeah, a lot of questions there. So what are your last words for us today? Oh, my God. Do some research before you marry somebody. Yeah, get a background check, baby. <laughs> yeah, know somebody. Like, I met someone the other day, and where where was he from? It was like, we're talking about his education. It's like, where is he from? And she's like, I don't know. And it really weirded me out because how do you not know where your spouse is from? Anyways, I'm just saying, like, if you're going to commit long-term to someone, get to know Or them for more bit. than a week, apparently. More than a week, yeah. it's <laughs> Do some digging. Yeah. So that you're not being dug into the ground. Good one. Shallowly. Yeah. 
Ugh, gross. Yeah, I don't yeah. know which one. Of, I don't know which one I'm most upset about, Margaret or or Jacob. They're both yeah. so gross. Yeah, it is really upsetting. She, the way she took advantage of both of them. Yeah. Ugh, poor Margaret took care of her daughter. Yeah. Jacob, she was hoping that he'd be so grief stricken that she could just yep wrap him around her finger, and he said no. And you know. so Betty ended up in a children's home, and we lost. I I think that she went on to be married and have her own family, but I don't like to dig into the children because no, I feel I hope you just ran away and had a great yeah a great life. Agreed, and I hope that that's what happened. Yeah. Well. Okay, you can find us on Facebook. Ugh. You can find us on Instagram at Tea Time Crimes. <laughs> you can email us at Tea Time Crimes at gmail dot com. Oh, and oh my God, yes. Rate and review us. Like, just do that extra thing on Apple Podcasts if you have it. It's really helpful. You can just say beep, bop, boop, bop in the review if you want. Um, but, you know, just share your feelings. It's really helpful. Hit Thanks those stars to- and a beep, bop, boop, bop, please. <laughs> That's all we need. It was um, really helpful to those who did. just helps us get a uh, scene on the algorithms. So, yeah. Thanks. That'd be great. Yeah, beep, bop, boop, bop over there. Thank you so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Thank you for listening. Bye. Bye.